Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock. I am an artist and I work in a lot of different mediums and create projects of all sorts. And today I'll be working in pen and ink. These are multi-liners and I'm going to color the image when I'm done. And it's gonna be available for you to purchase if you find the coloring of this to be as easy as I found it to be. Cause you can do something really great with it in short order. So if you are looking at Mother's Day and thinking, I'm not done yet with mom's card, this might just bail you out. So stay tuned, let's buckle in and I'll tell you some mom stories since it's a Mother's Day video. And I'll show you how I created the roses and did some of the coloring. So the sketchbook that I'll be using today is by Olo and something interesting about it. They have this sheet, of course, in the front that has product information and it says you could use this in between your artwork. So I trimmed mine down a little smaller than the page so I could stick it in there and realized I should probably stick the white side facing up. And over time, any sheet that you put under there is going to have some issues. So you'll have to, you know, just keep replacing that sheet every, you know, 20 drawings or so. It doesn't leak through that badly. One of the things I wanted to do here was test this sketchbook because I've had a lot of alcohol marker sketchbooks in my days. The one that I, the ones, should I say plural, I've gone through a lot of them that I had for Copic had a really nice paper in them that is excellent for pen and ink. I mean, absolutely excellent for maybe not not always fountain pen because it depends on how your fountain pen ink works but if you're using a multi-liner of some kind i'm telling you this paper was always really good and this paper is basically the same as far as i can tell it's also manufactured in oregon because the ones that i had gotten years ago were manufactured in oregon when the distributor that works out of that area had made the copic ones so i can pretty much vouch for this paper i've gone through many sketchbooks. It just says Olo on the front now. So I decided I would draw mom some flowers. And the reason I'm drawing mom some flowers is because I've had this thing with her for decades where on Mother's Day, I always send her like an enormous, oversized, ridiculous bouquet of flowers. And I used to, at the very beginning, when I was feeling flush, I used to order them from FTD or one of those big national carrier people. And then I found out that they actually send them via a local bouquet distributor, a local florist. They just, you know, con contract with them and they take a chunk of it. So I've switched now to at least finding the local florist to send mom some flowers. But I always send her like a big, glorious bouquet that's like crazy huge so that she feels the love. Now she always has said, oh, you shouldn't give me flowers because they'll just die. You know, it's, I don't need anything, but I'm telling you, she posts the picture of the flowers on Facebook and she gets all excited and she tells everybody about it. And I am the good daughter. So this year I gave her her Mother's Day flowers while I was there since I could personally deliver them. I even gave her a Mother's Day card, but I had to uh, buy the Mother's Day card because I didn't have card making stuff there. And I thought, I'm going to make her an extra special image on her card. And I am making it available for you if you would also like to send this to your mom or your grandma or your daughter or, you know, you could send it for any kind of theme, I guess, as well. I wanted to make vintage roses. So I pulled roses from a whole bunch of different photos. I was looking for just the right angles, that sort of thing, and put them into a sketch that I have then, as you can see, translated into some black and white. I started with the outlines and then I'm using hash marks. Um, I was trying to see if I was going to just use one layer of them and realized it was not gonna give me the variance in value that I like because my idea for this, as I was looking at a lot of vintage art, was to try to make something that the pen and ink holds the value. And really, unless you want to, you could just color flat color over this. You can color a flat red for the roses, flat green for all the green stuff, and be done with it. Now, I'm going to do a little fancier coloring now, because, you know, you know me and one color, not really my jam. 
but the illustration came out really beautiful. So it is available. You can get it free with purchase of $50 worth of classes if you would like, or you can just purchase it by itself. I did put it on, on sale from its final price. The markers I'm using are Olo markers, and they have a different way of working. If you haven't seen them yet, they have two halves and you can get the front and back half in one color. So you can get a chisel nib and a uh, brush nib, but I decided I didn't need the chisel nib. So I only have the brush nibs and I wanted to do some airbrush. Normally it's the chisel nib of a Copic marker that goes in this gun, but I wanted to see if I could get the brush nib of an Olo marker to work. And it kind of did. It was a little on the wiggly side, but the air from the gun goes from the compressor on the floor into a hose and then up here into the gun itself and blows across the surface of the marker. When you're doing that with a brush nib instead of a chisel nib, you get a texture to it. It's more like sand texture rather than like an, a smooth airbrushy texture. You can kind of see that there. But it's a very light covering of the marker. So I was able to use the colorless blender to pull some of that color out. And then I'm gonna just start doing some of the coloring in the first pass using straight up color, just so you can see how well this works. You can get something that's gonna look really gorgeous with just a single layer of color. You don't have to do any blending at all. So if you are new to coloring, this might be a great thing to work with. I'm gonna add more layers, because that's me. But I also wanted to show you the difference when you color a red rose. Lots of people want to have the value difference from really, really light to really, really dark when you're coloring something that's red. Well, on a something that's red, there's very rarely something that's actually going to be a pink. So I went to my hex chart and I looked for what the colors would be for a rose. And using this one, kind of a peachy color, peachy pink color, as the lightest color going in with a very dark where the hash marks are the darkest, the cross hatching, and then a mid-tone and then a light so that the petal kind of has that graduation. Notice how little it has at the tip. It's just not very much, but it really depends on what kind of color you want overall in the rose itself. So I'm gonna color this entire one with that same process with a very dark in the shadow areas a mid-tone and then going to a lighter red and then another coat, a second coat of that light pink color. Because, I mean, you don't really need to go with that many, but I'm doing this full size as well. This is like an eight and a half, I guess it's nine by 12 sketchbook. So I think the drawing is probably eight and a half by 11, just to give you an idea. And uh, you can shrink it down. I'll show you the card that I made for mom later on in this video. You can print it small but the JPEG that you'll get is an eight and a half by 11 page. So you'll have to shrink that to whatever size you would like to color it at. But here I'm just adding all of the shadow colors, the mid-tone colors and getting that blending going. And with all those lines underneath, a lot of this is unnecessary, but I still just wanted to try it and see if this kind of shading pushes it that much further and makes it look that much better. And you can be the judge of that when we get to the end, because I'm going to do the other flowers a different way, because this looks more like a peach rose. It doesn't look like a red rose. It's also not completely colored. I did it really quickly because I knew I was going to fix it. But this is what happens when you start using more of the dark color and then bring that mid-tone kind of middle red up much higher. And then only the tips are going to be a lighter color. And you can even use an orange when you're highlighting a red, if you want some kind of a glowing tip to it, you don't even have to use a red red, but you still get that variance in color, but just color over top of the whole thing with your orangey color. And now it looks like a red rose compared to the other one, doesn't it? It just has more color in it. And unless you have some dots, you know, like maybe there's drops of water or something on it that have highlights, it's really not going to help to have a lot of those super, super light colors at the very tips. Now I can go in here and darken most of the flowers and leave some of the tips and that will give a certain kind of look to the flower. But I just started kind of going through and blocking a lot of that out, letting some of the orange show through, but I wanted the roses to feel more like red roses. 
and adding more of that deeper, richer color takes them from being a peach rose into being an actual red, you know, like a warm red rose. Now here I'm adding a darker green to some of the greens and a lot of that is the interior part of the group of flowers because anything inside there is going to maybe be in more shadow. And then there's some areas where I'm just going to follow the shading that I drew into the pen and ink. And if you want to add shading, it's basically all there for you. Just use the pen and ink as your guide. And if you want some highlights, the Olo Marker Colorless Blender works far better, I found, than the Copic Marker one. So even if you're a Copic user and you just want to get one color and try out what this system is all about, get yourself one that's a colorless blender on one side of it because that it just, I don't know whether it's just stronger formulation or something than the Copic one, or maybe my Copic ones just have never been fully juiced up and this one is juicy. I don't know, but I do get better results. I don't get that kind of splotchy white sort of look that you can sometimes get. So for the baby's breath in here, I started by making some of them yellow because one of the references I saw had baby's breath that was white and then these little tiny even smaller than the baby's breath had some yellow flowers and it was gonna kind of go that direction but with that sprayed background that I had it sort of needed something cooler so I used a very pale blue violet color and then I realized I really wanted to make these pop I wanted the baby's breath you know how baby's breath just feels so white in the middle of a colorful bouquet so I got out the gouache and once I did that, I could start painting over most of the, the lines on all of this little baby's breath that was drawn on here. Even in the white background areas, I could add more baby's breath because now I'm just dealing with the color that's underneath of it. And I could kind of squint at it and say, okay, if I had baby's breath in here and I were making a bouquet, I would put a little cluster in here, a little cluster in there. Just make sure you make them look like they're kind of clusters so that they they look like they're groupings of flowers. If you put more into the open areas, you can draw in a black stem for the extra flowers that you add. But when you're looking at the ones that have red or green behind them, the stems kind of disappear. And what I opted to do is make them more visible. And to do that, I just used a gel pen to connect some of the extra flowers and even some of the ones where the stems disappeared because they were drawn in the black. And that made everything just feel more like those were actual stems of little tiny flowers. Now, not every flower has to have a stem, that sort of thing, but it's kind of fun to add that extra small detail. It's easier to add that extra detail when you're working on a really huge piece like this one. On a card though, you kind of have to scale the blobs down a little bit. But what I did here was airbrush the entire background. And then I colored one red over the entire flowers and one green over all the greens. I colored right through all of the white for the most part. Some of them I colored around, but for the most part, they were just colored right through. And then I'm painting the white on top. So it's super easy to do this and get the look that feels like you've done a lot of coloring when you really didn't. So if you're interested in picking this up, the Vintage Roses printable is available. There will be a link in the doobly-doo. And again, if during the month of May, you purchase $50 worth of classes on my website, you'll get this for free. Otherwise, you can buy it for just a couple of bucks. And yeah, there are my finished pieces. Thank you so much for watching. Happy early Mother's Day. I'll see you on Saturday with a new video anyway, but uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.